Hallelujah. Lift your voice and just thank him. Oh, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We're not afraid to praise you. We give you glory. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. No matter what I've been through, you are worthy. No matter what I'm facing, you are worthy to be praised. In the good times, I'm going to praise you. In the bad times, I'll never lose my praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody shall praise the Lord. Amen. Turn and smile at somebody and tell them God's been good to me. God's been good to me. Hallelujah. Sometimes I feel like God's been better to me. First of all, better than he should have. Better than I deserve. But sometimes I feel like God's been better to me than somebody else. You feel like you're God's favorite sometimes. Not all the time, but just sometimes. Amen. Hallelujah. The good times and the bad times. I'll never lose my praise. When God answers my prayer, it's easy to praise him when he's answered your prayer. But when the heavens are brass and your body's hurting or your kids are sick and you can't pay bills, it's not as easy to praise him, is it? But I don't ever want to lose my praise because no matter what the circumstances are that I'm currently in, doesn't change the fact that he's worthy to be praised. Amen. When I think of his goodness and all that he's done for me, I can't help but let my soul cry out, hallelujah. 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 Sometimes you just got to say, Hallelujah anyhow. Amen. I don't have the answer, but Hallelujah anyhow. Hallelujah anyhow. Come on, does anybody have an anyhow praise? Praise God, praise God. I know you've been standing a while. Before you're seated, let's turn our attention to the book of Matthew. Forgive my raspy voice tonight. But man, we've been having church. We've been having great church. And uh, it's been such an honor to be here with our friends, the Pars, and the rest of you folks. And appreciate so very much your kindness and hospitality and making us feel at home and having liberty to just, you know, there's something I appreciate. It's, it's an unfettered pulpit. Too many places today, um, <clears throat> church or other places, everything needs to be politically correct. And, and so the devil and the world would love to chain or fetter the pulpit and silence the voice of good godly people. Amen. That's the hour we live in. Praise God. So I, I thank God for an unfettered pulpit. I appreciate the liberty that I've felt and so thankful for everything that God has done and the lives that have been touched and changed and challenged and so great to see all of our guests here tonight. Thank you for being here. Amen. Thank you for being here. And I, I give honor to all of our pastors that are here. Um, having pastored 15 years, 
I understand the weight of responsibility that you carry and also your busy schedules. And for you to take time out on a Tuesday night in the midst of all that you have going, to be here to worship the Lord with us, we sincerely appreciate that. We give honor to you, to all of our pastors that are here. My friend Rick, it's good to see you back again tonight. One more time, would you thank all our pastors for being here. Matthew chapter 15, verse number 21. <clears throat> then Jesus went thence and departed into the coasts of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. But he answered her, not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith, be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Amen. We began last night a message that hopefully if you weren't here, it won't matter. We'll try and tie it together. But in prayer today, and uh, what I felt last night, again today, the struggle sometimes as an evangelist is, Pastor, I feel so many things and such I can't say everything I feel that God wants me to say to this church in one sermon. You just, there's so many things. So I don't know when, I don't know how, whatever the pastor feels, but I do know that I'll be back. The Lord has told me that. So Lord willing, whenever that is, amen, whenever that is in God's timing, Lord willing, amen. So I'm going to attempt tonight to get out of what I feel. I'm going to do my best to pour out what God's poured into me for you folks. And I, uh, I promise you this, I'll give it everything I've got left. Okay, I, I, prom I think you folks been here, you know that. I'm going to give you everything I've got left if you'll help me preach tonight. It may be just like this, but no matter the volume or the intensity of the delivery, doesn't change the effect of the power of an all-powerful God. And the Lord is here to move tonight. And God's here to minister to people that come with needs, people that come with expectation. And we preached a little bit about that last night. And Lord willing, we're going to continue on that and see where the Lord takes us. All you need is a crumb. All you need is a crumb, just a little bit of his power. That's all we need. Well, we thank you tonight. <clears throat> thank you for the privilege to preach again your gospel. I pray that you would anoint our ears to hear and receive. Anoint what's left of my voice. Touch me, O oh God, from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. Anoint my voice. Anoint my mind. Anoint us to flow in the vein of the Spirit. That your perfect will and purpose would be done. Yes, God. Yes, God. I feel your touch even now. Your anointed unction. Hallelujah. We come, Lord, to hear a word from you. We need you to visit us. We need you to have your way. 
their hungry, broken lives and bleeding, bleeding hearts here tonight that need a word from God. Yes, 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 God. I'm believing you for miracles. I'm believing you for breakthroughs. I'm believing you for healings. I'm believing you for apostolic demonstration. Yes, Lord, do it again. Do it again. Do it again, oh God. Confirm your word. Clap your hands and give him great praise. Praise God. God bless you. you. may be seated. Turn and tell your neighbor, it's up to you when we get out of here tonight. Amen. These folks know what I'm talking about. If you really believe that, you'd be shouting right now, we'd just go eat pizza and go home. Amen. Let me tell you, folks had been here. I grew up quail hunting, and so I learned early that if you don't get everything out of the covey that's there, you got to just keep circling back until you flush out everything that, that's there. So I have a tendency as a preacher, you other pastors, preachers may understand this, that if I don't feel like we got what we needed to get right there, then I have a tendency to just, if you just nod at me, I'm not sure you got it. And, and so if I, the, the level of your participation or response to that point or that moment or that word indicates to me that they got it. They got it. I'm going to move on. Amen. So I have a tendency to camp out there if we don't feel we got everything flushed out that needs to be flushed out. So the more help I get, the shorter I preach. The less I get, the longer I preach. Amen. So remind your neighbor again, it's up to you when we get out of here tonight. Praise God. We talked a little bit about faith and expectancy. The Bible said, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, not yet seen. Amen. We understand that faith is a vital ingredient in our walk with God, in our relationship with God. We cannot have a walk with God without faith. Faith, amen, is a necessity. It is something that we cannot uh, be without. We must have faith. Now, the Bible um, tells us about people that had little faith. And then the Bible talks to us about people that had small faith and uh, the Bible talks about those that had no faith. And then the scripture gives us many examples of those that had great faith. Somebody say great faith. Now, the woman in our text, Jesus said that she had great faith. Without faith, the word of God said it is impossible to please the Lord. He says, without faith, it, we talked about this last night, no matter what your it is, you fill in the blank, fill in the blank with your need, with your it, no matter what it is, without faith, it is impossible. I know that's elementary for most of you, but just for a foundation, I must reestablish that you understand what the Bible is talking about when it speaks of great faith. Hallelujah. Everything we need in God comes by faith. Healing comes by faith. We are saved by faith. We are kept by faith. We are delivered by faith. We are blessed by faith. Faith, hallelujah, faith is something that we must have in our relationship, in our walk with God. Amen. Why is it that when we hear about uh, something like Pastor mentioned a while ago, uh, the pastor that just had a miracle of God providing 
property and a place to build a new church. Amen. Let me tell you, we ought to celebrate that. We ought to celebrate that. I preached a little bit about it last night. What God is doing elsewhere in Modesto, California, and in Oklahoma, and Philippines, and around the world, we need to celebrate the victories and breakthroughs that God is giving to his people. Because when we celebrate what God is doing there, then, amen, it releases something so that God can do it here, amen. In other words, if I see in Oklahoma they have a hundred soul revival in a church of 75, amen, then I can believe God that if he can do it there, then why can't he do it? Here, amen. I come to preach to you. I don't know who's told you that Kenneth can't have a Holy Ghost revival. That's a lie from the demons and pits of hell. I come to shatter that in the realm of the Spirit and speak the word of faith that a Holy Ghost genuine revival is coming. Amen. It's starting. The rivulet has begun. The revival is on the way to every church in the city of Kennett, Missouri. Kennett needs a Holy Ghost revival. Kennett needs the kind of revival. Keep me up there, Brother Mark. Don't turn me down. Amen. Kennett needs the kind of revival uh, that turns uh, meth houses, uh, meth homes, uh, amen, like I preached about last night, uh, that turns meth homes uh, into Bible study homes uh, and soul winning stations uh, for hungry, broken, bound, uh, delivered people. Amen. That's the kind of revival that we need to see in Kennett, Missouri. And it comes by faith. It comes by hunger. It comes by desire and desperation. Let me tell you, some folks are just sitting back uh, waiting for some mystical move of the Spirit to come whirling along out of nowhere. And when it happens, then we'll have revival. Then we'll reach our city. Then I'll give, Pastor, like I need to. Then I'll teach a Bible study. Then I'll be faithful to church. I'm waiting on it, waiting on it. It's coming. If we'll sit back and hold the fort and hold the line, it's coming. God's going to explode it on us. If you take that position and posture, let me say it as kindly as I can. You'll never see it. You'll never have it. God is looking for people that realize revival is as available as it's ever going to be. Every promise in that book, it's as available as it's ever been and as it ever will be. Amen. We're not waiting on God. God's waiting on us. Some people with great faith that will rise, amen, square their shoulders and say, I'm ready to do whatever it takes somewhere, sometime, somehow. I've got to have a revival and this is time and this is my season yeah. hallelujah I'm talking about great faith great faith amen it doesn't just happen where people aren't hungry and reaching with desire there's got that first desire first precedes the miraculous Desire. If there's no desire, amen, the woman with the issue of blood, if she doesn't have enough desire to break through and touch the master's garment, then there's no healing for her. Jacob, if he doesn't have the desire to wrestle with the angel all night until he finally said that the manifestation of God, that, and he, he wrestled with desire, and he said, no matter what it takes, I'm not leaving here without a blessing. If God got to wrestle all night long, he thought if he didn't have desire, then there would have been no breakthrough. There would have been no Israel. There would have been no Jacob that walked different. He left there that place called Peniel, I believe it was. He left there walking different and talking different because he had a touch of God. He had a breakthrough. It was all 
been a result of his desire. Hey, folks, it's all about desire. It's all about desire. Hey, man, you pastors know it's all about desire. If people don't want to live for God, if they don't have a desire, I can't make them live for God. If they don't want to worship and praise God because he's worthy, I can't make them, amen, praise and worship God like he's worthy. First comes desire. If there is a desire, then that will be met with a heavenly hunger. God always responds to the hunger and the desire of his people. If he can find somebody that's got great great faith and great desire then he will he if you could see god it's like he's hovering hovering with expectation over solid rock i wish i named the name of every church in this city over solid rock he's he's hovering he's saying i, I that's it. Stir them up. Push them. Challenge them. I've got to see some vehement desire. Like Paul said to the Corinthians uh, when he preached to them in First and Second Corinthians. Uh, he told them, he said, I felt bad because I preached to you a word of conviction. I felt bad about being the messenger and having to say the things I had to say to stir you and challenge you. He said, I felt bad because I was the messenger. And what I had to say was convicting. But now, he said not so much. Because I see, I see that that word that I delivered unto you, amen, it changed them, pastor. It turned that church in Corinth upside down. It, it changed something about their mentality because he delivered a strong word that stirred up a desire in them that had been dormant. And when he said, I felt bad about it, I don't feel bad anymore because now I see the result of that word. I see now you have a vehement desire. Amen. You know what that word means? It had to be translated uh, into two words in the English uh, to try and convey what it really means. Amen. You go study that out. That word vehement desire. It's talking about something that is energetic. Uh, something that is violent. Uh, something that is hot. Uh, something that is e intense, if you please. Uh, he said, I felt bad about what I preached in that revival or that letter I sent unto you, that word. But I don't feel bad because I see it stirred up in you. You repented of a godly sort. Amen. It stirred up a desire in you, a fear in you, a faith in you. Lift your hands and tell the Lord, God, stir me up. Whatever it takes, stir me up. Stir me, challenge me. Preach to me. Stretch my faith. Stretch my faith. I'm preaching about great faith. Somebody say great faith. Great faith overcomes impossibilities. Why is it when we hear a miracle like that? Or like the revival I talked a little bit about last night in Modesto, California. Where we saw over 1,000 people that we could get names on, receive a genuine, a genuine book of Acts experience. They repented of their sins. They made a change in their mind, their heart. They gave their life to God. They were baptized in the saving, cleansing name of Jesus Christ for the remission of those sins. They received the gift of the Holy Ghost with a biblical evidence of speaking in tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance. They baptized them all afternoon till church time Sunday night. Baptized them, amen, up until 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning. But in that same revival, Pastor, we're seeing 75 and 100 people receive that experience in one service. Um, uh, dozens and dozens of undeniable, unexplainable miracles of healing and deliverance. And, and I'm talking about crazy things, crazy things. There was a lady there in a wheelchair. Lady that came in the midst of all this outpouring, she had 
in a wheelchair. I didn't know the story, but her foot had been severed in an accident. She was there. They had sewn it back on, of course. It had been two or three years since the accident. And they, uh, she had never walked since then. And uh, they, had, they did have feeling there just a little bit. But she said while God was moving in those altar services, all of a sudden she felt a tingling and a burning in her foot. Amen. Now, I mean, this may be a little crazy for some of you. But God, somehow, she began to feel something. She began to move her foot. And the next thing you know, she said, right, somebody help me up. Help me up. They helped her up. And she stood there for the first time on that weak foot. And uh, for two or three years it had been, she began to lift her hands, worshiping, praising God for what God was doing. Amen. We're tears streaming down her cheeks. The next thing you know, she's taken a step of faith. Amen. That's great faith. She took a step of faith and then another step and then another step. Hallelujah. She got up out of that wheelchair and then she was walking across the altar. That church had sat uh, around Right at 1800 was packed. The altars were packed. She got her path cleared out. She was walking. The next thing you know, she walked around the building. And then, amen, she tried to run a little bit. And then we gave her the mic and she began to testify. I hadn't been able to walk in two years, but God just healed my body. God just gave me a miracle. There's something about great faith that makes the impossible possible because God is a God of impossibility. Clap your hands and thank the Lord. Listen folks, we hear stuff like that or like a pastor land being given or a building or somebody donating a million dollars we can reach missions or do what we need to do and we, we say man that's unbelievable that, that's an unbelievable miracle unbelievable now I, I know we're saying that just you know not, not literally perhaps sometimes like I don't believe that but why is it we say that's an unbelievable miracle because anything you tell me Pastor Parr anything I don't care how crazy it is I don't care if it's a prophet friend of mine poured water into a gas tank because he ran out of gas in the middle of nowhere and all he had was water. Turned water in there and prayed, God, if you can turn water into wine, you can turn water into gasoline. And he went and cranked up the car and drove. He just kept on driving. He said, I'm going to run as long as I can. <laughs> and he finally did stop and get some gas. He wasn't completely ignorant. Hallelujah. But that's crazy. I, I know. I know. That's crazy. But we hear that kind of stuff. It's unbelievable. I don't care how impossible and how crazy or radical something is that you tell me. If you tell me Jesus did it, Jesus did it, hey, I'm going to shout and rejoice with you. I'm going to shout. I'm going to throw a fit rejoicing with you over your unbelievable miracle. Hallelujah. Because God, he is a miracle working God. Hallelujah. That's believable because God can do anything that he decides to do. I don't care how far out it is. If you tell me God did it, I'll say I believe it. I'll say we can. Pastor, it doesn't matter what you tell me that you said God told us to do. I'll agree with you and I'll say we can see it. We will see it. It shall happen because our God, he is a supernatural God. Lift your hands and praise him if you believe that. Come on, worship him. I'm trying to preach to somebody tonight to, to spark and then strengthen and lift your faith. You may have come with no faith. If I can just get you to have a little grain of mustard seed of faith about your situation, just a little crumb of faith about
about your problem. You may have come with small faith. I want to preach to you a word from God and let you leave here with great faith in a great God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Remember Joshua was in the midst of a great victory, but the sun started setting. He said, I'm not ready. I, I'm not finished. The sun can't set. I haven't got all out of this day that I need. I, I, I've had a little bit of victory, but I need complete and total victory. Amen. I wonder if there's anybody here tonight with great faith, great faith saying, I, I see just a little ray of hope, but I haven't got the complete victory or deliverance, but I'm so desperate like Joshua in desperation. The Bible said in the sight of Israel, he cried out, Son, stand still. He wasn't intimidated. He didn't care if everybody heard him. We talked a little bit about that last night, the power of the spoken word. You can't be intimidated about what God put in your spirit to speak. You got to speak it out. Whatever it is in your family you're struggling with, the battle of your kids, whatever their struggle, you got to speak that word of faith. Lift your voice like Joshua did in the sight of Israel and with radical faith declare we will have revival. My kid will get delivered from drugs. And then my son will not be an alcoholic. We will have a move of God in my city, in my church. And I don't care who hears me. I don't care what they think. They may not believe it. They may not want any part of it. That's fine. Hallelujah. All I know is I've got a radical faith and I'm desperate and I'm going to do whatever it takes. You hear me devil? With boldness I declare it shall be. Son, stand still. And Joshua filled with great faith and God put the brakes on the universe. He stopped everything. He saw a man with great faith. That, that radical faith. He evidently had no clue about how the universe works. Joshua didn't even have a seventh grade education that let you know that he, he even said it wrong, Pastor. I want you to catch this. He, he didn't have it all worked out theologically or physiology or geographically. Or in, he didn't understand how it all worked, but but God saw his desperate and great faith. You may not know how all to say it and how all it works or even how God's going to do it. But Joshua just said with great faith. And he, he didn't know that the sun doesn't rotate around the earth. The earth rotates around the sun. Am I right? Is that right? Joshua didn't know that. He just knew I'm desperate and I've got to have a miracle. Joshua didn't even say it right, but God said, that's all right, son. I know you. I see that you've got great faith. I see your desperation. Hallelujah. Can I tell somebody that miracles sometimes are about desperate faith? The supernatural is about a hunger and desperation. Lift your hands and worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Joshua had great faith. And then we come to the woman of our text. Jesus said, I've not seen such great faith in all of Israel. I've not seen anything like this. Three things that this woman did, and I'll preach this. Give me five, ten minutes. I'm going to hurry the best I can. You're going to stay with me? Hallelujah. God wants to confirm his word tonight. God's going to confirm his word tonight. Hallelujah. God is going to confirm his word tonight. And this woman, the Bible said she had great faith. Somebody say persistence. Praise and perception are ingredients of great faith. Sometimes great faith is just about stubbornness or steadfastness 
or persistence. Hallelujah. Sometimes great faith is the ability to overlook the obstacles and stay focused on the objective. Great faith is continuing on under conflicting circumstances. Some pastor, you need to hear me. Great faith. Everybody may not be with you or on board yet because they can't see what you see from your vantage point. But great faith is saying, I've got a word from God. I I see it by faith and God's going to give it to us I just need some people that will join with me and believe it great faith is the confession of human inadequacies you hear me sometimes I think the reason people miss their miracle elder is because they get the feeling that I don't deserve this I'm not worthy of this because we think somebody else is more worthy because we don't know all their junk. But we know us and our junk. And so we think, I'm not really worthy, Pastor. I'm not really worthy, Evangelist. Hallelujah. Listen, folks, if we got what we were worthy of, if we got what we deserved, do you hear me? If we got, I'll just say me, if I got what I deserved, I'd already be lost, headed to hell. I'd be burnt, amen. I'd be burnt up already. I, I, I'm telling you, I see some honest folks. Just, I see some honest folks. Hallelujah. Well, that's all right. We'll preach the rest of you. I, I'm honest. I'll tell you, if I got what I deserved, I'd already be over, said, done, buried, six feet deep. It's over. Hallelujah. But we don't get what we deserve. And we don't get what we earn. We don't get what. We're not saved by works. We're not saved by worthiness or works. We're not saved by worthiness or works. You need to hear me. We're not saved because you can't earn it and you will never deserve it. None of it. Not forgiveness. Not deliverance. Not mercy, not grace. You don't deserve any of it. I don't deserve any of it. We don't get what we deserve. We don't get what we work for or earn. Hallelujah. It's not about works or worthiness. It's because he is worthy. Come on, lift your hands and cry out to God. I know I'm not worthy. I know I don't deserve this. But God, but God, I've got a mustard seed of faith. I've got a crop of faith. And I believe. God, you are worthy. God, you are worthy. I'm thankful for your blood. I'm thankful for your cross. I'm thankful for forgiveness. Come on, tell it. I know I don't deserve it. I don't deserve the Holy Ghost. I don't deserve the blood. I don't deserve your anointing. I don't deserve the breakthrough. But God, you are worthy. That's what that woman did. She kept on persistently praising God. That's what great faith is. The ingredient of great faith is persistence and a perpetual praise that says no matter what, you answer my prayer, I'll praise you. You don't answer my prayer, I'll still praise you. Ignore me and I'll praise you. Insult me and I'll praise you. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. There's some of you sitting there tonight and the devil's telling you the bills you got at home, the mess you left, amen, the mess you left at home, the bills stacked up that you can't pay, the contracts that you're trying to read that you can't, you can't understand, you don't know, you don't understand, you don't know what you're going to do. 
the mess in your home, the mess your kids have made of their life, strung out on, on crack and crank and methamphetamines and alcoholism and drug addiction, and the devil's telling you they'll never be free, they'll never, they'll never break through, they don't deserve it, they're unworthy. Hallelujah. What do you got to praise God about? What do you got to lift your hands about? I know what you did last week. I know who you are, where you come from. You don't deserve to be on that pew. You don't deserve to praise him. I'll tell you what I've got to praise him about. The blood, the mercy, the grace. He's worthy. I'm going to keep on praising him. I'm going to keep on worshiping. No matter what, I'm going to praise him anyhow. Come on, somebody, give him an anyhow praise. Give him an anyhow worship. Hallelujah. 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 Pastor, she was undeserving. The Bible said she came from Tyre and Sidon. She knew she was unworthy. She knew who she was. She cried out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. She tried to use those high, holy Jewish words that would somehow maybe fool him and think that she was deserving and worthy of what she needed. Her daughter, her daughter's in a mess. Her daughter's grievously vexed. She's got a problem. Man. She's done everything she can to help her. She can't help her. She's desperate. Oh, Jesus, thou son of David. Amen. She tried all those high, holy words and, and he just the Bible says he ignored her he just didn't even respond hallelujah hello Jesus can you hear me anybody else ever been there maybe it's just me and my wife or maybe it's us we got bad reception out here in the middle of Missouri hello can you hear me now Come on, any honest one. Can you hear me now, Jesus? Thou son of David. I'll try anything. I'll call him. I'll, I'll say what. Jesus, thou son of David, my children, my daughter. Jesus, can you hear me now? Nothing. He ignored her. And then she went on. And the disciples said, you're going to have to get this woman out of here. She's on our nerves. I'm paraphrasing. They read it. That's what they said. Woman, this woman cried after us. We, we don't have time for this now. It's not on our schedule. It's not in our service schedule. We don't have time for this right now. And just, Jesus, she's embarrassing us. She's irritating us. Just get her out of the way. Ignore. He ignored her. You know what she did? It's an ingredient of great faith. She was persistent. She just said, she just kept crying. She just kept crying out. She was persistent. She was stubborn. She had great faith. She would not be denied. She didn't care what the disciples said. She didn't care what her brother and them said, her cousin and them, somebody on the pew down over here said, somebody crossed tent. She didn't care. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Help me. Help me. I need help. Can you hear me now? I'm not come to give the children's bread to dogs, to goats. He ignored her, and then he insulted her. What do you do when somebody ignores and insults you? <laughs> I've pastored a long time. It probably don't happen here in Missouri, but in Mississippi, sometimes folks, the pastor didn't shake their hand every Sunday. <laughs> they get offended, lose out in their walk with God because somebody crossed the building and didn't speak to them. Or they didn't use me in such and such department, or they didn't recognize me, or they didn't affirm me. Great faith. 
great faith says, you can ignore me and you can insult me. You can kick me out of the choir, kick me off the praise team, take me out of the sound booth, ignore me. Sister so-and-so can talk about me on Facebook. She can post this and on social media and Instagram and, and, and Twitter and, and they, can, they can make fun of me and ridicule me and mock me and talk about my past and my mistakes. And You hear me? You hear me? I'm preaching to some folks tonight. That's not in any notes, okay? That's not in any notes. I'm just telling you. It's going to happen. People are going to hurt you. People are going to talk bad about you. You know why this elder's still here, living for God, worshiping God with a good spirit? Hey, man, you think nobody's ever talked about him? You think nobody's ever spoke words against him behind his back to his face? You think that's never happened? You think he's never over, had to come over any obstacles, any sicknesses and diseases and, and trouble, 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 conflict, crisis, storms? No, 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 no. The reason some are still here worshiping, praising God in spite of people ignoring them, in spite of people insulting them, is because they got what that little woman had. They got great faith that said, you can ignore me, you can insult me, you can stomp on me. But I'm going to still be here worshiping, praising, because it's not about you. It's about him, and he's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah. She was ignored. She was insulted. Baby, get ready. I'm getting to a close. She was ignored. God's getting ready to confirm his word. There's miracles here tonight. I'm telling you, you don't have to believe it. I'm I believe it. There's miracles here tonight. There's healing in this building. Physical, spiritual, emotional. There's healing here for you tonight. I said there's healing for you here tonight. In the name of Jesus, there's healing and miracles for you here tonight. Yes, you've been hurt. Yes, there are hypocrites in the church. Yes, yes. There's hypocrites everywhere. You can go to hell with them or you can go to heaven with them. There's hypocrites everywhere. You won't find a church that don't have some hypocrites. Well, I never did in Mississippi or Texas, and I pastored in both. But there's hypocrites. But you cannot get distracted by people and circumstances. You've got to keep your eyes on God. Amen. If you keep your eyes on him in the midst of the waves and the seas and the thundering and the lightning, hallelujah, that's what Simon Peter did when he lost his, he got distracted. And when he did, it began to sink. Your walk in the supernatural, you will begin to sink if you take your eyes off of him. But if you keep your eyes on him with great faith, amen, you won't sink in the storm. You won't sink in the storm you are in. Hallelujah. You won't sink in it. Hallelujah. I don't know you folks. I'm not here to embarrass you, but I just feel to tell you that. The storm, whatever it is, whatever it is, are you a pastor? Whatever it is, your family or your church, hallelujah, whatever that storm is, you're not going to sink in it. You hear me? You're not going to sink in it. But the devil's telling you, hey amen, he's come against you. Well, I see, I see an aura of things, and I'll name them to you later in the altar. But I see them. But God told me to tell you, you will not sink in it. Keep your eyes on God. Keep preaching. Keep on preaching. Keep preaching faith. You will not sink in the storm. You will not sink in that dilemma. You will not sink in that dilemma. Hallelujah. And so, this woman, I'm sorry, all I had was cookies, but it'll make the point. Hallelujah. She finally, she tried all that church religious words. None of that worked. 
to you, ignored, called her dog. What'd she do? Quit the choir? No. What'd she do? Quit worship? No. Quit paying tithes, giving offers? No. Did she mm. felt that bump right there? Did you feel that? Hallelujah. Well, I'll just I'll make a point. I just won't pay my tithes and offering anymore. Just go ahead. You're not hurting anybody but yourself. I'm, I'm sorry. This is not my business, Pastor. I'm not trying to meddle. But whoever whoever I'm preaching to is probably somebody in the building. Somebody not in the building. Somebody on on CD. They're not here tonight. Okay. So everybody just relax. There ain't nobody here. It's these folks up there. We see you. We hear you. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. You're not hurting anybody but yourself. When you withdraw yourself from the involvement in the church because of something that happened. Things happen, folks. Things happen. It happens. you got to get over it. You can't become bitter. If you become bitter, you're drinking poison and it's killing you and not anybody else. And, and you withdraw your involvement. You withdraw your gifts. You withdraw your talents. You withdraw your tithes. You withdraw your treasures. You withdraw your talents. You, you withdraw all that. You're not hurting anybody but yourself and your family. That's right. Hallelujah. Jesus. Mm. Lift your hands. Just wait on the Lord with me a moment. Hallelujah. Come on. God's here to help you tonight. God's not here to embarrass anybody. God's not here to hurt anybody. He is a perfect gentleman. He's a perfect gentleman. He never steps beyond the door. You allow him to open up the door and let him in. You hear me? Nobody's going to force anything on you tonight or any time. The only way God does for you what he wants to do in this service and in the future is if you, if you make the decision to open up your heart and let God work in your life. You hold that authority. God, there is a stone that is so big that God cannot move it. And that stone is your will and my will, and our will, our human will, we have the power to stop God. But we also have the ability to open that up and allow God to minister. But only if we allow Him. Great faith. I'm trying to hurry. Go ahead, baby. She said this. I'm closing. She said, Truth, Lord. Truth. It's true. You got me. It's true. I'm, I'm not worried. Truth. It's true what you said about me. It's true. It's true what you posted about me. It's true. It, it may sometimes be true what they do and what they say. But God can take all of that, put it under the blood. He can fix it. That's what Romans 8, 28 is all about. You know that. That all things work together for the good. To them that love God. Who are called according to his purpose. Everybody here, you got a purpose. And there may be bad things happen to you or against you. Some of it deserved, some of it undeserved. Some of it intentional, some of it unintentional. But no matter what it is, God can cause it all to work together. It's like, a, it's like, it's like an orchestra and God's directing. He can direct it all to work together for your good. Amen. If you have faith in Him, great faith. Great faith says, true what you said and did. It's true. But God, even the dogs, and everybody may think I am, even the dogs get the crumbs. I'm sorry to whoever cleans up. Even the dogs get the crumbs that fall from the master's table. I don't deserve the whole loaf. I don't deserve all those things that you've got reserved for the high and the holy and the deserving. But God, all
all I need is just a crumb of your power. And, and if, if you'll just give me a crumb for you to cast the devil out of my daughter on the other side of town, you don't even have to break a sweat. You don't even have to roll your sleeves up for you to heal my baby, for you to save my son, for you to heal my body, for you to deliver, for you to fill me with the Holy Ghost. All it takes is just a crumb. Just, just a crumb. Just, just a crumb. That's it. That's all I need, God. I, I don't need you to bankrupt heaven. I don't need you to Oh, are you to meet my little need? All I need is a crumb. Stand with me. I'm preaching to some folks here tonight. The Holy Ghost has brought you here and he's reaching for you. But the green, all you need for God to take care of that need. That, that you've been praying about, that you've been fasting about, that maybe nobody else knows, but that you and your family, God said, all you need, all you need is just a little crumb. That's all it takes. It's all it takes, just a little bit of his power to touch you tonight. That's great faith. Persistence. Praise and a proper perception of his power. A proper perception. Hear me. You know what we do? We look at our problem and we see how big it is. And we make our problem bigger than his power. And the ingredient of great faith that she had. And he said, I hadn't seen anything like this. What she had, brother was praise, persistence, and great faith that said, I've got the proper perception of who you are and how powerful you are. And so you don't even have to go, you don't even have to go where my daughter is. You can speak the word. She had a perception of how powerful he was. Some of you need to get that tonight. You're looking at your problem and the devil's blown it up so big. The devil's blown it up so big that all you see is the problem or the obstacle or the hindrance or the resistance. Come on, lift your eyes a little higher. Lift your eyes like the prophet said to the young man that was his understudy. Oh God, open his eyes that he might see that there are more that are with us than there are that are with him. I don't know what your need is. I know some of them because God showed me. But I'm going to tell you what I'm getting ready to do. I'm going to make a mess. But I'm putting these crumbs all over this altar. I'm going to try and just keep them on this bench. Hallelujah. And whatever your need is, no matter how big, no matter how small, hallelujah, I don't want anybody to be left out. I know this is silly for some of you, but this is faith. Sometimes a silly act of faith will be the, the, cri the critical catalyst that calls you to break through. Amen. And I'm putting them on the altar. If you want to leave like you came, that's fine. If you, if you don't have great faith, that's fine. I'm not here to hurt anybody or embarrass you or force you. But all you need is just a crumb. All you need is just a crumb of his power to save your sin, to save your lost family. All you need is a crumb. It's here. God's here. God's getting ready to confirm his word. If I were you, I would have already gotten me a crumb. I'm inviting you to come right now, quickly, quickly. Faith moves quickly. Vehement desire moves, responds to a word, no matter how silly it may seem to some, no matter what others may think about my response. I've got great faith. I'm, no, no, that's it. That's it. 
grab it grab hold of it lift it to heaven and say God I got the proper perception of your power I know all you all I know for you to deliver my son for you to fill me with the Holy Ghost tonight all I need is a crumb come on folks reach for it grab it grab it grab it grab hold of it sing it baby come on lift your hands to God let the Holy Ghost move let's fill these altars with praise Come on, that's it. <laughs> 